This is the fourth part of our lesson about the T-date time data type in Delphi. In this lesson, we will explore how to format time values in Delphi code. We will finalize this project we already started in Unit 13.1. We programmed this label to show the current time with a T-timer that ticks every second. We also coded the calendar view to display a birth date and age in these labels. And in the previous video, we learned how to format a date in a t-date time variable with the format date time function, and we displayed it in different formats in these labels. Today, we will also show different time formats in the labels here on the right side of the form. If it is your first time here and you want to do the project with me, you can download the project and the source code from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. I'm using a free version of Delphi 10.3 Community Edition to record these lessons. You can also download a free copy from Embargadero's website. You can find the links to all the downloads I mentioned here in this video's description. After you download it to start the project from patreon.com slash learndelphi, open it in your copy of Delphi and finish the project with me. Here I have the project open in Delphi. Last time we wrote all this code. Now you will continue further with these half-completed statements, and I will walk you through each line of code we write together. The t-date-time picker component already formats the selected date in different formats. Now you must write code that reads the current system time and format it in different formats. In the code editor, scroll to the end of the statements we finished last time. Put your mouse pointer in front of the line terminator that ends this instruction. Add this code to the back of the statement. Here we use the time to string function that we explored before to convert the current time to a string. The result is then concatenated to a literal string value, and then everything is assigned to the caption of a label named LBL default time. You learned in a previous lesson that now is a function that gets the current time and date. Let's look at the result. Run the program. Select any date from the date time picker. The default format that shows is hour, minute and second, separated by colons. Close the form and move on to the next statement. Put your cursor in front of this line terminator. Add this code to the back of the statement. Like last time when we format the dates, we use the format date time function again. The format date time function is used to convert a date time value to a formatted string. It takes two input parameters. The first parameter is a combination of characters that represent the format that you want to use for the date or time output. We will look at a few examples in a moment. The second parameter is the date or time that must be formatted. We already formatted dates, so today we want to format time. Let's assume the time is 5 past 9 in the morning and it is the third second. The time can now be formatted in various ways depending on the value in the first parameter. Let's look at a few examples. This combination of characters that we pass to the format string parameter tells the format date time function to format the time to numbers with no leading zeros for single digit hours, minutes, seconds and milliseconds. H is used for hours. The N is used for minutes because you learned last time that M is used for month. S is used for seconds and Z is used for milliseconds. The result will be like this. Notice that no leading zeros are returned. This combination of characters tells the format date time function to format the parts of the time to double digit numbers with leading zeros for single digit hours, minutes and seconds. And three Zs will return three digits for milliseconds with leading zeros if necessary. And the single T will format the time like this. The hour and the minutes are formatted to two digits each and no seconds and milliseconds are returned. 2Ts tells the format date time function to format the time like this. Two digits are returned for the hour, minutes and seconds, and no milliseconds are returned. So in this statement, we use the format date time function to return the current time, or now. The result is then assigned to the caption of LBL short time MS. Run the project. Select any date in the date-time picker. I'm recording the video at a time when the hour, minutes, seconds and milliseconds are all big values, so leading zeros are not required. 
But if your timing is right when you run your project, you will get leading zeros where necessary. Close the form. Go to the end of the next statement and add this code. This code will format the time to single digit numbers for small hours, minutes and seconds, but milliseconds will not be returned. The result is then assigned to the caption of LBL no MS. Run the project. Select any date in the datetime picker. Look at this output. I got it while the seconds were still small, so it displays a single digit for seconds. Close the form. Go to the back of the next statement and add this code. Here we format the time to double digits for hours, minutes and seconds and three digits for milliseconds. If the numbers are small, leading zeros will be added. Run the project. Select the date from the date time picker. Make sure you get the correct format in this label. Close the form. Go to the back of the next statement and add this code. A single T will only return the hour and the minutes with two digits each. Run the project again. Select the date from the date time picker. Make sure you get the correct format in this label. Close the form. Go to the back of the next statement and add this code. Two T's will return the hour, minutes and seconds with two digits each, but milliseconds will not be returned. Run the project for a last time. Make sure you get the correct format in this label. And this concludes our lessons for the T-Date Time Data Type. We must still explore the Boolean Data Type, but we will do that while we are also exploring conditional logic. Next time, we will start a series of lessons to learn how to write statements that makes decisions based on conditions. We will look at different ways to use if statements in Delphi code. If this lesson was helpful to you, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. See you next time.